Guess what, folks? A lot of people picked up new hobbies during the pandemic, and nurseries are making record sales. But are you buying the right plant? That's the good question. Yes, we're going to teach you how. Today, we're taking you to the Theodore Payne Foundation, who can turn anyone into a green thumb, and you can support local wildlife at the same time. There's a reason California is called the Golden State. It's beautiful. And what's magical about these gardens is that they're planted with California natives. What, were you expecting cactus? It's not a desert landscape. A lot of people think that, but it's a Mediterranean landscape. So it's much more of a shrubland with flowers and really a, a, a lush with a lot of vegetation. This epilobium or fuchsia can actually take on this, the heat that we're about to experience. These plants are drought tolerant, so they require little water. And the added magic is what I call the Snow White effect. You'll attract hummingbirds, honeybees, and butterflies. The plants of California have evolved with the animals of California. So when you bring those plants into your garden, you're creating habitat for the native animals, not only the native plants, but the native animals as well. All of the plants at the Theodore Payne Foundation are California natives. It's just outside of a heavily industrial area of Sun Valley. You head into a canyon and you enter a 22 acre oasis with gardens, picnic benches, hiking trails, seed and bookstores, and a nursery. People love the hummingbird sage, which is a beautiful aromatic plant that grows in shade, which is great to have. And then milkweed, that's the biggest one right now is milkweed because it supports the monarch butterflies. Monarchs lay their eggs on California milkweed, and once they become caterpillars, they eat the leaves. But here's an example of a non-native plant that's bad for butterflies. Tropical milkweed is not healthy for California monarchs, so they say don't plant it. It confuses them into breeding when they should be migrating. It's such a serious issue, Northern California just set aside a million dollars to plant California milkweed for our monarch population. I think the most exciting thing for kids might be the monarch butterfly, to see the caterpillars, see them form the chrysalis, and then that opens up and you have a butterfly flying around all of a sudden. So for children, this idea of connecting with nature in your own personal space is, is really an amazing thing. Take a tour through the nursery and learn much more with nursery manager Flora Ito. It's six minutes, so informative. Go to CBSLA.com, click Scene on TV. You can also learn about their events and classes. And we're going to do a mini class right now. Okay. I'm so excited. So I brought three plants each mm -hmm. from Theodore Payne, the nonprofit. There are three types. Coyote mint, which is a nectar food source for butterflies if you want to attract them. It makes tea. It is also um, edible because it's mint. You can put it in mojitos, but very potent. Then there's hummingbird sage. It smells really sweet. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful in your garden, and it just, you enter your garden, it's, they say, uh, stop and smell the sages. And you can wow. eat it. White sage is also very special to the, our indigenous Southern Californians. Smudging is real or, really popular now with you know, everybody moving into a new home. But because of that, there's a black market for wild sage, which is now harming our wild populations. So people should grow their own. Now, we have all three of those. Okay. I want you guys to see Let's go for what you do test. is do it like feel the little leaves mm. and then smell. You want to release the scents and the oils. Mm -hmm. Uh, coyote like, mint. Yes, this is coyote mint. Coyote I can just, mint. Yeah, you can feel this. And this is the mm, hummingbird. This has to be the hummingbird sage because this oh, smells so Amber's good. Amber's right. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. okay. It smells so Keep good. Going. I'll let you guys know and when you're right. And sage. And this is white sage because deductive reasoning. Because Amber's right. Of what we burn, right? I feel like this yeah, is the Yeah, the tall middle one is the white sage. This is a white sage. <laughs> but this one smells so good. DeMarco, you need to smell this one. The one to your left. It smells you so You can tell good. I that wasn't good sweet. in class, right? Mm. Mm. Right? Okay. Am I right? Let me make Thank sure. You. No, the next one. Yeah, yeah that this one smells is sweet so one. good. The sage. sage, white sage, oh, and I coyote love it. mint. So, yes, isn't that fabulous? And you can bring them in your garden. And, Amber, you have a house with a yard, so you can plant all three. They oh, grow I love big and it. beautiful. You don't need a lot of water. You guys did a fairly decent job. Thank but yeah, you. If you feel these leaves. And you know what? You've been a really good teacher. You've been trying to yeah. educate us all morning. And so I feel very, I'm walking away from this like I went into this master class of learned. gardening. You guys were teasing me that you were just going to rip me a new one. You actually <laughs> learned something. We did. And you know what? I have a gardening forecast for you. Yay. Look at this. So they say that you should 
actually water your garden as much as possible. Um, so this actually said yes earlier. I don't know why it disappeared, but you should probably water your garden today and then maybe take a break tomorrow, but then try and water more of it as you head into the weekend. Because I know we're heading into the hottest time of the year as we head into summer. And so a lot of people I've been uh, reading up on and they're saying that it doesn't matter if you water every day, just make sure you water the soil so that the ground is a little wetter so that they can trap the moisture.